Welcome back to another Langmuir Systems Assembly video. In the last video, we installed the torch slide, the tube caps, and the cable support tube, and in this video, we'll be covering machine alignment. There's three different ways that the machine can be out of alignment. First, the gantry tube can be out of square to the upper rail. Since we assemble the gantry assembly in our factory using a very precise fixture, squareness of the gantry tube to the rail is something that under normal circumstances you shouldn't have to uh, be concerned with. Now if you do have an issue with squareness, what happens is the uh, parts that the squares that you try to cut out will end up as parallelograms and the circles will end up as ovals. So if you encounter those types of issues, you may want to uh, look into adjusting the squareness of the gantry tube. The second way is that the slat bed itself can be out of flat. Now we cover how to adjust that in a later video, uh, so I won't get into it here. Uh, but the third way that it can be uh, out of alignment is that the gantry tube can be out of parallelism to the slat bed. Now what I mean by that is if you can imagine if a torch was installed in the torch slide and I traversed it from one end of the gantry to the other, if it was out of parallel, the gap between the torch slide and the slat bed would not be consistent from one end to the other. In fact, I know that this gantry is out of alignment because this end of the gantry is higher than this end of the gantry. So the gap between the torch and the material would be higher here. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to cure that. First, let's go over the tools and the parts that you'll need. To complete the alignment, you'll need a 7 16 box wrench and a 3 16 Allen wrench. After the alignment's complete, we'll be securing the lead nuts to their mounts using the remaining hardware in bag number nine. You'll also need an 11 30 seconds box wrench and a 9 64 Allen wrench. The first step is to position the gantry so that it's in the center of its travel. So I'll pull the gantry towards the middle and simultaneously rotate the lead nut until the gantry is roughly in the center. Next, move the x-axis carriage until the torch slide is over the farthest slat and then drop it down until it's in contact with the slat and then tighten the thumb screw. Then grab the 7 16 wrench and 3 16 Allen wrench and break loose the four cap screws on each side of the carriage. Now when you break each bolt loose, go ahead and just seat the bolt after it's broken loose. Once the bolts are loose and reseated, we can unscrew the thumb screw and verify that the gantry can be shifted up and down. If it can't, go back and loosen any screws that may still be tight. Now before we retighten this, we want to align the top of the torch slide to be flush with the top of the carriage. If you have a water table, you'll want to make sure that the vertex on the chamfer of the torch slide is flush to the top of the carriage. So I make the top of the torch slide flush to the carriage before tightening the thumb screw. Now if you have a water table, you'll want to do the same thing except make it so that the vertex of the chamfer on the torch slide is flush to the top of the carriage before tightening the thumb screw. Since we don't have the water table installed, I'll put it back so the torch slide is flush to the top of the carriage and then tighten the thumb screw. Next, re-tighten the four cap screws that are on the top. With those bolts tight, I can undo the thumb screw and then use the eighth inch shim to set the torch slide an eighth of an inch above the slat for retightening the thumb screw. Now I'm just going to traverse the carriage and check to see how it's tracking to the top of the tor or to the top of the slat bed. 
Now I can tell that my gap gets worse as it gets closer to the uh, upper rail, which means that on my next iteration, I need to drop this into the gantry down. So I'll do that now. Before I do that, I wanna drop the torch slide down to the slat again, tighten the thumb screw, and then I'll go and uh, loosen the four bolts again that I previously tightened. Now it appeared that this end of the gantry was about uh, a sixteenth high, so I'm going to drop the gantry down roughly a sixteenth of an inch and then check again. And I'll go back and uh, tighten the four bolts again. Set the torch slide height again with the eighth inch shim. Tighten the thumb screw and then check to see how it's tracking. That looks a lot better. So I'll use uh, the eighth inch thumb, thumb screw on the slat at the far end. And it appears that it goes in with almost no clearance. So I'll double check on this side again. And it, the fit of the shim feels about the same on each side. So now I know my carriage is tracking parallel to the slat bed. And I can go and retighten the lower four bolts that are still loose. Now that the alignment is complete, we can install the lead nuts. Before we do that, I need to position the gantry back to where it was and slide it to its most extreme point of travel. So I'm rotating the lead nut simultaneously. Next, rotate the lead nut until it mates to against the, its mounting flange. Now make sure that one of the flats of the lead nut is positioned vertically like this. Now I can install the hardware from bag number nine. Now there's a, the bolts go through from this side with washers on each end and the hex nut is secured on the opposite end of the flange. Now before tightening these bolts, you want to make sure that when you tighten the bolt, you don't push the lead screw one direction or the other. You can see there's quite a bit of flex to it. When we tighten these, we want to make sure that the lead screw remains in its natural position. Next, use the same procedure to secure the x-axis lead nut. That wraps up machine alignment and installation of the lead nuts. In the next video, we'll cover installing the electronics. Thanks for watching.